the first one will be, someone very quickly, do me a favor, divide um, 180 by four, that's a four orange slices. 45. That uh, is a 45. And then to get to the next place, you just add the same number each time, 45 will get to the next one. Then whatever that answer is, you add another 45 to get you the next slice in line. Um, and so uh, if you're getting each one of those, as you went all the way around the circle, basically, once you find out um, what each slice is to get the next slice, there's two of them, you can multiply. In other words, I can add 45 plus 45 to get to the next slice. Uh, or I could do, there are two slices. Oh, two times 45 is. Or there are three slices. Oh, three times 45 is. So this is at the bottom of the page. Um, while you're messing around looking at that or writing that down, if you uh, did, I'm going to go ahead and do C and C and G just to remind you, uh, which isn't the major goal today, but um, so that we can finish this piece, uh, I want to get that out of the way. And also, a couple of us need to look back in this section on our um, on our mini quiz to do this or uh, in um, Marco's case, in case you haven't seen the video yet. Um, this will be a section. I'm not sure when you're going to do all the stuff, but all right. I'm going two degrees. Um, why did I write that right there? Right now, it's in the way. I'll put you over here. I'm going to change on the fly, and then uh, five or five, five or six. When I get the other class and I do this radian degrees thing, I wish I would have stressed the idea that whenever you hear radian, uh, it's the crust of the pizza. Um, it's part of the circumference is how much you're around on the outside and degrees is really uh, the point as that point to the uh, inside of those circles so one is inside degrees the other guy is outside I would have said it that way over and over again so the minute you hear radians or the minute they give you the number pi in a number you automatically know oh, okay you're telling me how much uh, I'm going around the circle if I'm going uh, pi radians um, that means I'm going from here all the way to here. Just knowing that it's on the outside is something I would have really wanted to stress, uh, even though I have to come down here to the end. All right, Thomas, so let's go ahead and change this uh, degree into uh, radians. Uh, use a fraction, which is pi over 180. Uh, and of course, from there, you basically wind up with a fraction that you're going to reduce. Uh, I'm not sure, um, there's one or two that uh, you did something different. I'm not sure if you did. And I just want to remind you, like, no, no, degrees to radians, straightforward. Once you get that there, you figure out what number goes into pi and what number um, goes into 180. And someone else did something where once they got kind of this number, they they didn't have a fraction left over. Uh, basically, when you go to degrees to radians, most of the time, you're going to wind up with a fraction unless the top number is the same size as the 180 or a multiple of 180. But usually, you're going to wind up with a fraction. So, you get your papers back and kind of peek at that way. Oh, shoot. But again, I put an X where it is so you don't kind of have to find it yourself. Um, of course, 2 goes into 2. And then 2 goes into uh, 180. Um, I just need that. Uh, so on the top pi, how many times does 2 go into 180? Someone when you. Oh. So again, I'm not necessarily clean this out for everybody, but uh, just in case when you get yours back, you're like, oh shoot, this little section I did some crazy stuff. Uh, really, I should have just done that. Um, the opposite direction, going from the crust of the pizza to, what is the angle? How, how wide did they cut my piece? Did I get like a really small slice of the pizza? Or, dang, can you guys give me a little bit more? Um, so I'll just put that on there, and then from there I'm going to try to find some of the other papers. I may go to the copier and just put the ones I've handed out to you, uh, or that I'm going to hand out to you into the system. And that way, I won't have to find them individually, but they'll just be there once and all, for all. So that's for the back page of um, performance task number three. All right, here we go. You can do this. There we go. All right. Uh, some of you didn't show work, so you missed one or two, but I couldn't tell, like, what is it that you didn't do that, uh, whatever. So on these, still show work. Uh, at the very least, putting um, the key fraction that will change them. Uh, with this guy, of course, um, you multiply. These two get canceled out. I might cancel just so you will hit one time. Anything divided by itself is one, and one times anything 
doesn't change it. That's what we mean when we say, oh, it cancels out. Um, so I'm going to do 5 times 180 divided by 6 uh, for me. So we went from outside the crust, and kind of what this means, we don't kind of say it, but let me kind of say what it means so you can feel like, okay, what did I just get there? If I had this circle, and I had five sixths of the top crust, in other words, this top crust, which goes to 180, if I had to divide that into six equal pieces, uh, let's see. If I can do this, one, two, one, two. If I were to divide this top part into six equal pieces, if I went as far as five of those pieces on the crust, and I stopped right there, how much would this angle have opened up so I could be in that position? That's what they're asking when they go from five pi over six to the degree, like how much did this thing have to open up? How many degrees? Did I open up 90 degrees, 140? Well, it says I opened up 150 degrees so that the outside of this thing was 5 6 of pi, which is that first half. Um, so I just want to put that up there while I go make some. We are going to um, graph the original. The original is with money. Um, we did 25 cents. 50 cents, 75 cents a dollar. Um, so you can start from those entities to look at any others that you have on like the original cosine, you can. Um, I think we did every two blocks was one. So I put a dot here um, for 50 cents. Second one for, uh, um, first 25 cents, second one 50 cents, 75 and a dollar. So you gotta put in money up to a dollar. These guys, um, all the way to the end is 2 pi. Like, why is it 2 pi all the way to the end? Because typically, these little dots represent how much you're going around an entire circle. Any circle, uh, you go around all the way until you hit 2 pi. It's just the way it is, even though mine looks like 25. It's 2 pi. Um, the middle half of 2 pi is just pi. And then if you cut that in half, half a pi would be pi over 2. There's no special thing. They just say half a pi. The only one that's extra tricky is this guy in the middle. And he is 3 halves pi. I don't know how to say it. Each one of these dots is a half. So if I have a half and a half, I go, oh, 1 pi. If I had another half, how do we say I have um, 1 and a half? We say we have 3 halves. I don't know how any unmathed way to say it. This way it is. But the question is, okay, that's important, but I thought you said something about 90. Now here it comes. You know how, how many degrees are in an entire circle? 360. 360. So technically this 2 pi goes along with 360. That's his partner with degrees. Anybody know what half of 360 is when you go just halfway around the entire circle? Uh -huh, I heard it. 180, and then half of 180 is going to be how much? 90. Yeah. And that's the 90 that they're talking about. Now, if we were in the unit, we've done a million of these. You're like, oh, yeah, I remember 90. But there's only one we didn't get, give a name to. Anybody know this tricky one again, what his number is? And the way I can say him is, if you're going around a circle, he's not just half, he's. 270. Uh -huh, 270. He's half, and then another. Um, one fourth, two seventies. I don't think you're actually going to do the thing you say you're doing. Just hit the X. But then I'll just double all together. It won't do it at all. But if you hit cancel, it'll cancel everything it's done. But it says that it's already ready. The status is ready. So if I hit the X, do you think it's going to stop what it did, or is it just going to remove that from the board? It's possible. You haven't written that much, though. That's a good point. Booyah. Yeah. Um, you're going to test on it? No, you're going to test right there to test the test. OK. Uh-huh. Yeah, you would trade them out for it. Um, you might let me know. All right, I'm putting my 270.
Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. I don't take too much time. Cause... All right, here we go. Um, so there it comes. Um, there's always one up and one down. I use two boxes to represent a single unit. Um, I've seen some people use one box, but they're so small. Uh, I'm going to put a one and a two just to show that that one represents, oh, okay. Oh, which is right? Negative one. There's a zero that we normally put there. And negative one, and then here comes negative two. And so from there, um, the last thing that I would always say uh, as I was trying to build one of these is when it was money and the first one was, uh, I'll put that in so I can have too much information on one board. The first dot was 25 cents. Um, oops, let's see if I can make it smaller. The second one was 50 cents. Um, up beneath the 25 and the 50. But I am going to put in the 25 and the 75 cents. Why are those important? Because you have to have um, something above or below the, oh shoot, please tell me that I'm doing cosine. I am doing cosine. Okay. Um, so the cosine we know is the roller coaster that starts up above. Um, that roller coaster starts up here at 1. Um, you go down through 25. So you hit the um, negative one below the halfway point. And then you come back up through the 75 until you land at one again. Oh, it is cosine. Any question on building cosine? Now what's true is, um, because they're going to make you do it, I'm going to build sine on the same um, on the same x y plane, which means everything will get all jumbled up or whatever. I'm going to make it red. Uh, I already feel bad doing it, but let's see if you follow it. Uh, okay, good luck. You build it exactly the same way. You got your um, your guys there. Um, again, something special happens at the 75 to 25. The hint is you're always going to have more money than 25 cents. Everybody knows that. You're always going to have, um, uh, let's see what color. You're going to have more money than 25 cents, and you're always going to have less money than 75 cents. This is cosine that we're going with now. So right now we just did sine, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, you just did cosine. I'm about to build one for sine, which they're going to have to do. But you draw all three of these on the same one show that um, you can't be confused. Here it comes. With, um, with sign, sign is like a regular roller coaster. It starts at zero. Uh, and then it goes up above 25. Down through 50 cents. At 75 cents, you hit the bottom. And you're back on the ground at, um, at a dollar or two five. So. Um, that's what we've done uh, the last time. Here's what I uh, have you do, because I just did it and you just followed. Um, on one of these empty guys, if we do the uh, negative cosine, there's a space down here empty because what I'm going to ask you to do is use the space to build, do a sine and a cosine, and then we'll peek at what um, tangent looks like. So take a moment. Um, see without, I look at mine, look at yours, see if you have to build um, a cosine, 25, 50, 75 dollar, starts at one, ends at one, see if you can do it. And then um, on the same one, uh, do the same thing with cosine. Now why don't we ask us to do that right after we did it and then see what you think about it. I think we're going to ask you, uh, I feel like it's so challenging. But, I feel like they're going to ask you to um, shift this blue cosine so that it matches um, the black sign. And let me see if this machine lets me do it by just pulling it over. Will you let me just pull it over? Not that, but if you let me grab the other thing. Um, how about that? How about nothing? How about not what I'm doing? I want to. Okay. So if I could grab this blue line, this cosine line, 
they actually match up. Let me do it. All right, I'll move the sign over since it's let me move the sign. All right, let me have one of them show that you can move it over and it'll match. All right, if I'm moving sign over, so it will match cosine, I just want to shift it to the left. And when I do, it lands right on it. They're going to ask you, if you're writing out two equations, how would you need to rewrite the sine equation to say, slide it to the left a certain amount so it lands on cosine? How, are they, how are, um, can you write the equation that says, slide it to the left? In this case, I'm sliding it back to its original position. Let me show that this might be one of the hard ones. Like I said, this first part is going to be the hardest part. Everything else is going to be like, oh, can you identify the first fraction or the second fraction? Um, here is the answer. So let's see. For cosine, which is blue, uh, hopefully we know that the equation, if I had space, if I were writing somewhere, they write the generic equation for cosine, which is a cosine um, x uh, plus k. Please write down the generic um, equation for cosine. The a, anybody know what the a stands for as you're writing? Uh, amplitude, how high up it goes or how low it goes. Um, now, it probably would have been a better idea if we would have done this second half right after we did the first half instead of switching to the last thing we just did. Um, it's the, oh, it's the inside part that um, is going to change. So, um, the second equation that we're going to write is going to be the cosine equation. I'm going to write it the sine equation. It starts off exactly the same way. Um, I'm going to leave a little more space here inside for the x because that this is going to be the inside x that's going to tell us to move. Let's see if I can help on this one. All right. So let's ask probably the easiest question if you know the answer. On the cosine. The midline, that's the line with the arrow, the midline, the midline has a number that's connected to it, um, and it goes with one of the letters up here. What letter does the midline go with, if you had to guess? K. Uh, it's the K. K tells me, okay, am I go up or am I going to go down? Um, so what number am I going to put for the K? What number is the K in this equation? Zero. Yeah, zero. All right, so far so good. This is on the blue guy. Not a real equation. They wouldn't write that zero down. It just disappear, whatever. But just so that we can put in all the pieces. Because today they're going to move it up, or they're going to move it down on you. So when you did that midline, you'd be like, okay, is that zero? Is that one? Is that two? Where did they put that midline? And that's the case. The last piece. All right, all right here comes the other question. Um, the other uh, easy part. What is the amplitude um, for the uh, cosine, the blue line? How high up does it go? Or how low does it go? One. Mm -hmm. So from the midline, you can either get the amplitude by going up and going, oh, okay, it only goes up one, or down. The midline will always slice it right in half. So you don't have to figure out, oh, does, how much does it go up and how much goes down. You can do either or. How much does it go up? Oh, one. Then I don't need to know how much goes down because it always has to go down the same amount. I'm going to put that one there as well. And then um, it's not shifted left or right, so cosine x is what we have there. This equation here, if you were to write it, you would be correct. On a standardized test, they wouldn't put the 0 and they wouldn't put the 1. Here's the part I'm actually trying to get you to. I'm going to give you a chance to write it so you feel comfortable writing. I'm trying to get you to, like, hey, if I want to move this black line to land on the blue line, um, how much do I move it? Um, and here comes the answer. Wish me luck. Move the black line to uh, land on the blue line. I need kind of this dot to go from here to here. Uh, I need this guy to just go two blocks, boxes up from here to here. Um, the question you have to ask is, how much is two boxes? 
The answer is it's 90 degrees if you're using the blue number. Every two boxes, 90, 90, plus another 90 is 180. If you're using pi, it would be pi over 2. Um, what should I use? I know they love pi over 2, but it's trickier than the 90. I'll say pi over 2. So here's what's going to happen. If I could shift this dot over two boxes, also known as 90 degrees or pi over 2, I would put that in the place of the x, and I would call that sine. Here's what I mean. Let's see if they can see it. He grabs the black, he moves it over two dots, and now it rests right on the blue. In other words, if I wanted to rewrite this equation here in terms of sine, in other words, if I want to write the blue stuff as the black picture, here's what I'd write. I'm going to put this part in here, and then I'm going to have us put the A and the K. In here, we move the x over 2 pi, that is 2 boxes. And the question is, if we move it to the left, what does the sign have to be instead of if we move it to the right? Now, anybody remember that part where if you move it to the left, is it positive or negative? Positive. Yeah. It's positive, that is, it's the opposite. That is, if you move it toward the negative numbers, you would expect, well, duh, that's going to be x minus pi over 2. But it's the opposite. So now it's true I'm doing this hard part first to use it whatever brain power you have now, so that when I move to the other two pieces, which is um, comparing the size of sine and cosine, um, we'll have that yes. It's supposed to be plus, right? Because you put x minus. Yes. yes, you are right. After all that talk about positive and negative, I did the wrong version. And now it's going to be hard because, thank you. Uh, and again, the reason it's positive is we moved the black line in that direction. All right, here comes the other question. Hey, what's going to be the, I can't even see. What's going to be the amplitude on this one? How high does it go? Yeah. It's the same one. It goes to the same height. You can always just check it by checking uh, the top ridge of it. Uh, somewhat different, what will the um, the midline be, the K be? Zero. Uh, same zero. I'm right now black, I feel so bad. Uh, let me see. Alright, we're going to see if there's something you want to ask about this. Here, here, so only test them out here. Uh, let me watch that. Okay, um, they're going to do something similar to you. The only difference is they're not going to be kind enough to make it be on zero. They're probably going to have it below or above, and they're going to make you put in the midline first to decide what the K is going to be. Then they're going to make you look up, okay, how high does it go, or how low does it go. Uh, the last thing they do that's going to make it hard is, okay, the fraction that you have to move it left or right. The way they're going to make it look is, I think when I get out, I'll tell you. Um, maybe I'll just give you that as a bonus. Um, they're going to move it one sixth of the way, but the question is, like, how am I going to be able to know it's one sixth of pi? Uh, and my hand is going to be here. There were two boxes, so it was pi over two. There's going to be six boxes that they're going to move it. So it's going to be one out of those six. When you get there, I, I may just say it to you. In short, if you get the originals, I'll help you with how much you're moving it um, and see if, if that's reasonable. Cause. Anyone have a question about, first, how to make the original cosine, the original sine, and then about moving it? That's the hardest part. I'll leave it like probably from before till now. Technically, okay. Technically, there's an H inside there. All right. All right. 
So they got that piece uh, out here. And the fact that came back means that um, it has something else to do. So on this one here, let's put this one in together. Um, this is 45, and then that should have at least six of those boxes filled in so that if you want to turn this in as a, um, as a part of your six, you can. Uh, 45 degrees to the right and um, two units down. Here we go. Um, 25 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar. Um, the first dot is based on what we just did before. I always go all the way to the end. Two pies at the end. Dang, you have too much brain power on this. Oh my god, I gotta let this go, I gotta let this go. Um, well, I'll fill it in quickly anyway. You just watch it, you can, uh, follow it, even if you don't write down. Pi is right there. Um, pi over 2 is here. Um, what is it he trying to, he's trying to get to? He's trying to get to, well, where is 45? Um, if pi over 2 is 90, Half of 90 is 45, so this dot here is the 45. That dot there is 45. Then they want us to move it down two units. There's one, there's two. What they're really saying to you is this this dot here. I want you to bring that down to two. And once you bring it down to two, the way they start you off with these black lines here to say, okay, start putting in 10, 15, 25, um, 25, 50, 75, and a dollar. Normally they start you right here at the front. They're saying with this new dot, that's going to be your new front. What does it mean that's the new front? That means you're going to put a line here. And we're going to put a new arrow here. All right. I'll fill this one in, then I'm going to do the two easier sections and let you make the goal. Use the time that I want to be able to get back some of the other stuff. All right, so here it comes. Hey, Thomas, now that you have moved it down to, got it, and I moved it to the right um, 45, so, so how do I graph it? You start the same thing, the 50, or the 25, 50, 75 dollar, as if nothing was ever there. Here's what I mean. Two boxes over is 25, two boxes over is 50 cents, two boxes over is 75 cents, and two boxes over is a dollar. Once you shift it the way they asked you now, you can go back and redraw your picture, uh, like normal. Um, this one is a cosine that we're doing, a cosine that we're doing. So we know it's going to start at the top. It's going to go through 25 cents. So it's right below the 50 cent piece. It's going to come back up to 75 cents and end right above a dollar. The reason I use money instead of the actual term go through um, pi over 2 and then right below pi is just so foreign. All right, so here it comes. I draw the pictures down through and up, and I did it. Right. Write it down, take it down. Um, five, two, five. Tangent is a three-dot dance. Uh, what does he mean tangent is a three-dot dance? He means that he has to draw a tangent from memory, and he doesn't do it all the time. He needs to find three dots, which are the three. Um, the, let's see, i got to back up now. I can't even see with the thing. Uh, let's see here. Excuse me. Um, the 25 cents, 50 cents, and 75 cents. Got it, got it. Here it goes. Notice here, there's a zero. You don't have that on the back of yours. If you're drawing one of these, um, it would look something like this. Hey, Thomas, draw a tangent. You start with your, um, your back away, 25 cents, 50 cents, all right. 
Can we buy 50 cents? 75 cents. Your dollar would be over here. So if you're making marks on here, just to, to make it look like the stuff we know, um, put in some of these things just to make it look like some of the stuff we know. Um, if I were putting money, I know you'd be 25 cents, you'd be 50 cents, you'd be 75 cents, and you'd be a dollar. Three dot dance. What are the three dots? The guy halfway. He's the most important dot. You're 50 cents. Now, some of you will forget this, Excuse, but at least I want you to have heard it. The 50 cents is right in the middle. The 25 cents and the 75 cents are kind of like guardians. They're like gonna, they're gonna protect that 50 cents. And how do they do that? Through the um, 25 cents, you put what is called an asymptote, a guardian. And through uh, 75 cents. Again, we got to protect 50 cents. I wish I knew some of the 50 cent uh, the rappers, bodyguards. I'd make some reference to them protecting 50 cents, but I don't. But the idea is the tangent is this line that goes to the middle through the 50 cent line. In other words, if I'm drawing the sign of the graph or tangent, it looks something like that. Three dot dance. This guy in the middle, the guy to my left, 25 cents, the guy to my right, 75 cents, and I just do this little wave right through it. If I had to draw another one, which they have, let's say I back up to the left. Now the three guys to the left, they're doing the same thing. That is, the guy who's in the middle, he also is protected by the two guys on either side. Three dot dance. So it turns out here at zero, the same thing is happening. The graph goes up and through. There's a reason why it does it. But for now, all I want you to be able to see is, if I ever saw this picture with a three dot dance, with two people protecting down in the middle, and this line swishing through the top, um, like a cubic um, function uh, that we did on the uh, polynomial thing, I'd want to say, oh, this is tangent. This is tangent. Um, they put tangent of x, that's what the picture looks like. All right, Paul. Um, try to put this tangent, this three dot bands, on that um, on that cosine sheet. In other words, what does he ask us to do? I think it was this guy right here. You did sine and cosine on the same one? Was it that one? Mm -hmm. All right, what I want you to do is put up some walls uh, uh, that go through 75 cents and go through 25 cents and then make that um, squishy line go through uh, the 50 cents. Huh, what are you saying? Redraw on that paper, part of what you see here, because believe it or not, they're going to ask you to. Okay, this on the one that has the two that we did. I think it's um, is this one that has both of them? Or is it this one that has both of them? Okay, then you can go on either one. All right, let's see. Three dot dance. There's 50 cents. There he is, there he is, there he is. Yeah, three dot dance. Let's see it. Um, this one. All right, there's 50, there's 75, yeah, yeah. I see it, I see it. Why would they actually do all three of them? Let's see, they all get one. Um, I get mine first. I get to be 30. Um, Oswald, you get to be 45. Good lucky day. Um, Tia gets to be 60. 90? Um, no, let me get them so you can have fractions. Um, Marcos, you get to be 120. And then Jessica, you get to be 135. If uh, David comes in, he gets to be 150. I'll say what I'm going to do first, and then uh, you'll have to do it second. We'll say it out loud. Hey, Thomas, find um, cosine of 30. And when it's your turn for you, I want you to write yours down. Whatever your degree is, I want you to write down cosine of your degree. As a matter of fact, do it now. Uh, all right. Yeah, I did that. Uh, nine. Mm -hmm. one? Okay. Let's plan for that. I wish I had another uh, something to give you. It goes after three. Give me another subject because I feel like you only have. All right. All right, so I'm putting uh, cosine for 30. I'm going to put sine 
for 30. This is just another language. Um, it's just another language. Uh, es, es una, una otra lenguaje. No sé, otra lenguaje. 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 Yeah. Sí, lenguaje. Es uh, so, solamente una otra lenguaje. Es, um, uh, you know, so basically if I can say the stuff, uh, you know, don't tell me pajamas. And there's somewhere, there's somewhere is what I'm saying to you. It only matters to the gigglers if they know what I'm saying. If you don't know what I'm saying, like me, where's why you want my, then there's nothing. But I just said, hey, uh, do you speak English and Mandarin? I love tape. Um, so here's the deal. Cosine 30 just says, if I give you an ordered pair, which one's the first one? That's it. And if uh, sine 30 says, if I give you an ordered pair, which one is the second one? That's it. Get ready for your 150, um, David, and write it down. Um, I'm also put my X and my Y. Get ready for it. I'll do it fast so that um, we don't spend a lot of time on this one. Uh, and I'll do a negative one really fast. Let me do a 20. I'm going to do a negative sine um, cosine of negative 30. Just to let you know that you get a negative degree, you have to find the number going the opposite direction. So really what they're asking is, hey, what's the cosine of 330? What's the first fraction of 330? You know the language? No big deal. If you don't know the language, I'm like, huh? All right, here it goes. Uh, Thomas, what's the um, exact value for the cosine of 30? Oh, it's radical 3 over 2. Anybody ready for theirs? You ready? Here we go, go fast. Um, your third, your uh, third thing. Uh, what's the uh, cosine of 45? Cosine 45 is radical 2 over 2. All right, cosine of 60? 1 over 2. Cosine of uh, 120? Radical 3 over 2. Ah, you gave me the sine, but I want the cosine. Oh, uh, negative 1 over 2. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, C comes before S, so cosine comes before sine, so the first fraction comes before the second one. Um, the cosine of uh, 135 degrees? Uh-huh. And then the cosine of 150? Negative radical 3 over 2. All right, I would do the sine, but I feel like it would just be uh, repetitive. Uh, but again, for mine, uh, my sine of 30 degrees is uh, 1 half. Let me ask uh, the, the negative version. Someone tell me the cosine of negative 30 degrees. The cosine of negative 30 over 2. Yeah. Say it again? Radical 3 over 2. Yeah, radical 3 over 2. Okay. Uh, the, if they give you a negative degree, technically they want you to go the opposite direction, but just 30. In other words, you subtract it away from the 360. I think they'll do a couple of negatives. Um, pause. Look at this section. Hey, what if they ask you what's the cosine of 390? They have something similar. Um, it kind of goes like this. This is a subtractive problem involved, but just so you can kind of get a feel of what you're doing. 360 is that. Okay, so I already used up uh, 360 of those degrees. I'm left with just 30 more of them. Uh, so I want to going up to here. And would this just be the radical 3 over 2? It would be. So what they're saying is like um, in the clock, if you go 12 hours, then another 12 hours from now will still be the time, um, just at a you know, different part of the day. But the same idea here, once you get here for 360, and I subtract away, then I really am just asking what is the cosine of 30. If you have to miss one, this is one of the kind of miss. Um, but I just saw like, oh shoot, I'm gonna miss that one for sure if they haven't heard of it. Um, if it's really big, just start subtracting 360 away from the number until the answer is an acute angle. In other words, until the number is less than 90. So if you subtract 360 once and the number is still, um, I guess it doesn't have to be less than 90. Until it's less than 360, because if it's 120, you can just go over to 120. Um, so I guess it just needs to be less than 360. This one just worked out that way. All right, so what do they know right now? Cosine, sign, they know that. Uh, what's that thing I'm trying to get them right now? Oh, on the same picture, let's see if we can handle this. I'm going to erase some stuff. Um, the x axis is called cosine, the y axis is called sine. Okay. Um, 
blue versus green. Let's see if I can get it to easy. If I went to 30 degrees, um, I put a point at 30 degrees. To get to that point, um, the way we normally do it, we go x first. And then we go up y second to get to that. Here's the question you're going to be asked in a different language. Um, if we were comparing the green to the blue, which is bigger? Um, is green bigger or is blue bigger? Or longer is another way of saying it. Green. Uh, green is longer. Yeah, yeah. When you look at this, it's like all the way here in the blue is just like that. The way they're going to ask you the question is, um, please find the degrees, 30 is one of them, where cosine is greater than um, sine. That's the language they're going to ask <coughs> the same question, which is, hey, I'm going to give you one of these degrees. You tell me um, in which case is 30, or rather in which case is the green bigger than the blue. Let me do another one. 45. 45 is very famous. 45 is famous because he's always the breaking point. Things are equal at 45. In other words, to get to 45, the green goes right about here. Uh, and the blue, let me erase this so that you can see it better. Um, the green goes right here. And then the blue goes here. At this point, hopefully you'll be able to see that the green and the blue are just about equal to each other. So the way they're going to have it written is cosine x. Oops, oops. Sorry, I need to put in some numbers here. Uh, if you're able to draw the picture, you'll be able to get the answer, but I'm also going to give you one other little tip. Cosine 30. Um, so that you will kind of know what numbers to look for. Cosine of 45 equals sine of 45. It's a different language, but all it means is um, when, you, um, when the distance you have to go out on the green is equal to the distance you have to go up there, you can say they're equal. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have this paper for the whole test, or are you just going to give it to us when we're on that section? I think you'll have it on I think you'll have the whole thing, because I think you only need it, or it's only valuable. For well, for that section, couldn't we just look at the fractions? Cosine is larger than sine, and then on 45, cosine and sine are equal. And then for 60, sine is larger than cosine. That is not true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess it, it, it um, But learning it is important too. Right? Well, the, yeah, I guess the <laughs> idea like, how does she recognize that? Someone looking like, okay, how does she know that? Um, uh, well, let me ask this. How do you know on 60 that sine is larger than cosine? Oh, it's much bigger. Okay. Um, but here's kind of another hint I'm going to give you, uh, which you can use that. Um, basically, for all the degrees lower than 45, this is the big hint. The green is always going to come out further than the blue. In other words, for all degrees less than uh, 45, uh, the cosine is always going to be bigger than um, sine. Okay. Um, for the degrees that are bigger than 45 up to 90, uh, the same thing is true. But what I would say to you, um, in addition to uh, what was just said there in terms of using the, um, the chart is, like, draw the picture on it. Like, just draw the line on it. In other words, if they say um, the cosine of 70, so they have 70 degrees, um, you can see to get to 70, I'm going to start off here a little bit on the green. But then I gotta go way up on the blue. Um, so hopefully you can see that here, the cosine of that 70, the green of the 70, is less than the blue of that 70. And so even if they put, let's say, um, 100 degrees, 
same thing to get to it. And this is why I want you to be able to draw the picture on there. Uh, to get to it, the cosine is a little small thing. The blue is large. And the question is, well, what is the breaking point? Well, halfway is 45 degrees. Okay. Let's see if I can have you draw one on yours. Uh, everyone draw, um, just briefly, draw the, um, draw 40 degrees. Oh, that's too close. Let me draw 10, 10 degrees. Draw 10 degrees. And with a highlighter with two different colors, I want you to choose one of them, probably the lighter one to be the cosine and the darker one to be the sine. And the idea behind it is, even if they give you one, um, kind of like what Tina's saying, that isn't on here, like if they don't give you one of the magical ones, like 45 or 60 or, or 30, that you understand what question they're actually asking you. Um, and I'll do one more, which is an ugly one. I'm going to do 215, uh, 210, 205. I'm going to have you do 205. I don't want her to do the same thing. Shoot. I guess I'll have to do three more. Do 205. Question is, though, if I didn't put it on in yet, if you guess where 205 was, it's okay to kind of estimate it. Uh, and then the last one I'll do is 260. 260. The three that you're going to write out um, is uh, 10 degrees, 205, and 260. The question you're being asked is, which is larger, sine or cosine? Another way of saying is, when you draw the green lines, um, who goes up further? Um, and again, even not knowing that, oh, bigger than 45, small than 45, if you can just sketch the picture, you're able to kind of see it. Think on the test uh, in its original form. C green is bigger. One way of saying it, of course, in this case, cosine 205 is greater than sine. They're going to be using the real thing. And then someone different on the 260, please. Sine. Uh, sine is larger, but the way they'll write it, there's all that's going to go with the cosine first. Uh, e is uh, just going to be less than the uh, sine. Uh, less than sine. And this is what is called conceptual math. In other words, we're not solving a problem per se. We're kind of just getting the idea, the concept. Of, oh, okay, I can feel this thing. I get this idea. All right. Um, I think you've got enough time. Would be do the hard ones, so 16, um, 16, maybe five or ten, five to seven minutes on 16 to 18. I can spend some time there and I'd be found, oh, I can do it or I can't do it. Um, then, um, Come back and spend some time on 11 to 15, 11 to 14, and then 15. 11 to 15 is what I consider um, easy doable. Uh, 16 to 18 is like, that's going to be the brain power. 